Now, there's so much I want to say about this. And so instead of telling you that social media is bad, and instead of telling you that the internet is bad, that we need to spend less time online, I want to teach you how to change your relationship to social media, how to change your relationship to your phone. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Nicole Bignola Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about loneliness and the brain and this perceived idea that we're connected through life because we have our phones, we have social media, we have our laptops on us all the time. But yet, as a nation, we are feeling more and more lonely. Harvard University conducted a longitudinal study, meaning that they tracked individuals for 85 years. And what they found is that relationships, strong and happy, important relationships matter the most when it comes to happiness and longevity. And here's the other thing, is that loneliness is the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes per day on our brains. Loneliness has been shown to increase chronic inflammation and cardiovascular diseases, which can also then lead to neurodegeneration. Now I'm gonna add another layer to this. I know that the UK is gray. I know that the UK is cold. However, a 2022 survey showed 74% of children are spending less time outdoors than prison inmates per week. And in one year alone, the average time spent online for children aged between five to 15 years old has nearly doubled from nine hours to 15 hours. And I'm gonna read you some stats. 16 to 24 year old, 40% of them say that they feel lonely often or very often compared to 27% of those aged 75 plus. So we have 16 year olds to 24 year olds, the most critical developmental stages when it comes to socializing, to understanding who you are, to growing your identity, to feeling like you belong in the world. 40% of adolescents in this age group feel more lonely than pensioners. That my friends to me is a call for an intervention. I wanna teach you how to change your relationship to social media, how to change your relationship to your phone. Because here's the other thing, when I tell you not to do something and you restrict yourself from something, we all know that it actually makes us want that thing even more. Am I right? So how do we do that? Step number one is knowledge and understanding. I want you to know that your phone is great. It is great. I get to call my long distance boyfriend through my phone every single day. That's fantastic. It's awesome. It's great. I love that. I love that I can be connected to my friends and my family like this. However, we also know that if we succumb to its effects, it's going to suck us in. And the way that we mitigate the pull and the effect that it has on us is to change our relationship to it and see that it can be positive, but it does not control us. So it starts with your mindset. And mindset is number one. Mindset is not enough, of course. So step number two is that you need to create a life outside of your phone that is more engaging than what is going on inside your phone or online. And this is especially true for children that do online gaming. Online gaming provides a wonderful experience for being able to connect to other players online and that's great. However, what tends to happen is that individuals start to feel more and more lonely because their entire life is online. And so when they have to switch off from the online world, it can be detrimental because they feel even more lonely in a place where you're supposed to feel like you're connected to other humans. And so creating a life where you want to be in outside of the online world is extremely important in making sure that you can conquer your habits towards it. Of course, it's going to be more fun to be on your phone if you have nothing else going on for you outside picking up a hobby, finding friends in real life that you want to hang out with. And step number three is understanding attentional captures. An attentional capture is when you are in an environment where there's something more fun surrounding you, your attention is going to be diverted to that. So if you have your phone in the near vicinity, of course, your brain is going to want to reach for it every single time because it has associated the phone with fun, with excitement, with unpredictable dopamine spiking because you don't know if you're going to have a notification. You don't know what you're going to see online. And so that is extremely rewarding to the brain. Beating your phone addiction and spending less time offline so that we can feel more connected starts by creating a disconnection to your phone. And that means leaving it outside the bathroom when you go to the bathroom. That means leaving it in a different room when you go to sleep. If you have the luxury of being able to walk in a place that's safe, it means leaving it at home when you go for a walk. I live in Portugal, it's fairly safe, so I get to leave my phone at home when I take my dogs out. That might not be the case for you, and that's absolutely fine, safety always first. But if you can leave your phone, 
We absolutely should do that more. Otherwise, it becomes an extension to our bodies and it is constantly in our hands. In fact, if you look at your pinky, I'm pretty sure that evolutionarily it is changing shape from holding it all of the time. Go and check your pinky finger and tell me how bad it is. Create some distance from your phone because otherwise it becomes an extension to your central nervous system. Create a life outside of it that is meaningful. When you are with your friends, leave it in your bag. When you're at the dinner table, leave it in your bag. When you're hanging out with the people that you care about, you don't need to check it, check it afterwards. And the problem is that a lot of us think we don't have this willpower. You absolutely have a lot more power over this thing than you think you do. How you spend your day is how you spend your life. If you are spending three hours a day on social media, that's 1,095 hours per year, which roughly translates to 45 days per year. That's over a month and a half of continuous scrolling a year. And if you add that up over the average lifespan of somebody, that is approximately eight years of your life spent scrolling social media. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that some of you use it for work. I know that some of you use it for entertainment and for decompression. I'm all for that. I do that. I lie in the bath and I scroll reels. I find them incredibly hilarious. I send them to my friends and family. However, I have a very fulfilling life outside of social media. Social media is my job, but it doesn't control me. If you're spending close to a decade on these apps and your life is not fulfilling, then it's time to call for an intervention. If you're spending a decade on your phone and your life is fine, then that's absolutely fine. It's just an opportunity for us to really see how this is overtaking everything. If you are unhappy in your life, if you don't have friendships, if your eating habits and your health habits are not being fulfilled on a weekly basis, if you're not studying, if you're not getting the grades, if you're not getting the job, if you're not getting better at that skill, then you need to take a look at what is going on with your phone because it is making us more lonely as humans. Even though we're so connected, we have to learn to immerse ourselves with the outside world by actively putting ourselves in situations where we have to engage with people. And here's the other thing. If you're neurodivergent, research shows that we can spend up to 75% of our time alone. And it is about quality of relationships, not quantity. So I'm not saying that you need to go and interact with every Tom, Dick and Harry. It's about making sure that you're cultivating healthy relationships because as we know, the Harvard study shows that cultivating fulfilling relationships is the key to longevity. Here's the other thing. We are learning to communicate through words alone. There's very little tone through a screen. And here's the other thing. There's no body language. So young people, teenagers, they are asking their parents to speak up for them at work. They are unable to resolve conflict because they don't know how to not escalate a situation into an argument. They don't know how to communicate themselves without it blowing up because we are not getting that eye to eye contact in conversations and humans anymore because we're constantly having conversations through our phone. I can call you names to your face on a phone. I wouldn't do that, but I could, and there would be no repercussions to my actions. I could never do that to your face. I'd probably get a slap. And that is the problem with the way that we're communicating through our phones is that it is making us lonelier. It is making us incapable of being able to cultivate proper relationships. They're making us more anxious and they're making us more lonely. And it is time for an intervention. Children under the age of 16 should not even have a phone in my opinion. And that is based on the opinion of many, many experts who are currently studying this very phenomenon. Every time you want to read a book and you feel yourself getting distracted and wanting to grab your phone, it sounds simple and it sounds like you don't have the power to do it. You absolutely can. Redivert that focus into your book, into whatever it is you're doing, because the problem is not the phone. The problem is us getting really, really good at giving into distraction. So distraction is becoming a habit. Guys, I hope you found today's episode helpful. If you could please like, comment, and subscribe and share this with a friend, share this with somebody who has a child who's maybe struggling.